All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement k-means clustering algorithm in Python in order to uh, segment a picture. Uh, this example mainly comes from chapter 9 of the Hands and Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn, Keras, and TensorFlow book by Orlane Giron. So the task at hand is to try to cluster uh, the colors in an image so that we can use that as a way to segment this image into different pieces. You can imagine that this, uh, although being a very simple approach, has a lot of utilities. For example, NASA may want to uh, look at the uh, satellite imagery and calculate the percentage of the area that is uh, under uh, the color green, right, in order to estimate, say, the percentage of the land that is uh, covered by uh, forests in an area. Or you know, it may want to calculate the uh, area that is covered by a river, for example. And uh, in order to do that, they can actually uh, try to figure out all the different shades of color, add them up together, and say that, okay, this is going to be where the forest is located. In this particular example, I am going to use this image that you see on screen. It is uh, an image of a ladybug uh, on, a, on, a, on a green uh, background, all right? So what I want to do is to try to see if I can segment this uh, image and, and basically draw lines around areas uh, where uh, are, are populated by different shades of colors and different colors, right? So I'd like to have, you know, this uh, red area or the black area as one, air, one whole segment and then all the other green areas as another segment. And that is basically what I'm going to do. So for that, I've uh, just uh, downloaded the picture of a ladybug. Uh, I'm going to put the link from where I downloaded it in the video, but you can just go ahead and uh, do it with any picture that you want, right? Uh, what I suggest is to find a picture that has a certain focal point and uh, a, a background that has a different shade of color. That makes things a little bit easier. So just Google for ladybug images and you'll find something. Or you can Google for flowers or animals or whatever. Uh, you know, you, as long as it's not too crowded, it would work well, right? Meaning that you can see cert, uh, just a few number of certain colors. In this case, I see red, black, maybe white here, and also uh, a whole lot of green in the background. So the very first thing that I'm going to import is going to be the IM read from matplotlib.image. So I go ahead and say uh, from matplotlib dot image import uh, I am read and this is going to help us to read the images that we have and because I'm going to create uh, basically outputs uh, I'm going to uh, import my matplot.pyplot plot as well and then uh, import numpy as NP, and then because there's going to be a bunch of warnings here and I don't want to look at the warnings, I'm going to import warnings and say warnings dot filter warnings and then say ignore. All right, so once I've uh, imported the tools that I need, I can go ahead and uh, take a look at the image that uh, I have. And um, uh, this is the image that I have, so I haven't imported anything. Uh, in order to do that, I can go ahead and say uh, image is going to be the result of I am read. And the name of the file that I give here is uh, ladybug. So I have uh, downloaded the picture of this uh, ladybug and I've called it uh, ladybug. It's a PNG file and I have stored it on the same folder where I have my um, my uh, Jupyter notebook. So I type in image is equal to I am read uh, and then give the name of the file. It will read that image and create the corresponding matrix 
and put it inside the new uh, new object called image for me. And uh, it's a good idea to take a look at the shape of this. And the result is a matrix. It says 363, 642, and 4. And this basically means that this uh, image, uh, this uh, ladybug image, is represented in a, a 3D matrix where the first value, the 363, uh, represents the height. Uh, the second dimension, which is 642, corresponds to width. And the third dimension, this 4, uh, corresponds to the number of color channels. In this case, it's 4, which means that it is... Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the RGBA format. What does RGBA format means? It means that it has a value for red, value for green, value for blue, and then uh, another additional value for alpha, which represents the transparency. Okay. And then if you want to look at the image that you just imported and turn it into a matrix, you can use plt.imshow and give it the name of the uh, data frame where the image is located at. So plt.mshow uh, and then image, and it will print you the image that you had. Now, the thing that is very interesting I want you to, to notice is that you see the dimensions that there are uh, 363 uh, was the width and then 642 was the uh, height. You see, you see sorry, see, uh, 363 was the height. You see that there is 363, and then 642. You see 642 is the width, and then it's a color image. Therefore, you have an RGBA, uh, four, four different uh, values for each pixel. So what I want to do now, before I can turn this uh, into a data set that I can use for k-means clustering, is to basically uh, turn each of these may, uh, cells that are represented by uh, four values, R, G, B, and A, into um, columns, right? So each cell is going to be one row, and each of those fat four uh, R, G, B, A values are going to be represented by a column. And today, to do that, I just use the reshape function. So I just say uh, image dot reshape negative one and four and I put the results in a data frame called X so once I do that if, if you want to see how the uh, how the result is going to look like you can just say X that shape if you can type properly and then you see that it, that uh, matrix is turned into uh, 233,046 rows and four columns, right? Each of those rows are, are going to represent one pixel here, okay? And to verify it, you can actually use the calculator to see 363 multiplied by 642 would be equal to 233,046, which is the uh, number of columns that you got here. Sorry, number of observation, number of rows that you got here. All right, now we are ready to do the clustering. And for that, uh, because we're going to do the k-means clustering, uh, we have to import it. So from sklearn.cluster import k-means, make sure that k and m are uppercase. And uh, then this is how you basically uh, do the clustering. You go ahead and uh, type in k-means. It's going to be uh, the same k-means that you imported here. And then you have to define the number of clusters. Uh, let's start with, say, four. So basically what I want to do is that I want to cluster... Um, create four clusters of colors, and then I have to say fit X. Now, one thing that I want you to pay attention here is that previously, even we were working with supervised machine learning algorithms, uh, the fit always had uh, uh, 
two parameters, X train and Y train, or X test and Y test, right? Here, we only have one. Why? Because the second element, which was the Y, which was the labels, no longer exist in unsupervised machine learning algorithms. That's why we are only using uh, X here, which is the number of features, right? So let's run this. Oh, here sh I should have clusters. And X is uppercase. All right, now it's run, basically. And to basically see what it has done, we can say um, K means that cluster centers to look at the centers that we have. And you see here, it creates uh, basically a matrix that has four rows and four columns, right? Each of them represent the centroids, the coordinates of those uh, cluster centroids, right? In the context of the image segmentation, each cluster corresponds to a representative color for each segment, right? Basically, these are the RGB values for each of the K clusters, right? So whatever this is, is going to be the representative color of the first cluster. This is the representative, uh, the RGBA values of the representative color of the second cluster, the third cluster and the fourth cluster respectively. And the other thing that you can look at is uh, K means that labels, And this is basically going to be uh, the labels of each data point. In this case, the pixels of the image, right? So these labels are indicating which cluster each pixel belongs to. It means that the very first pixel here belongs to cluster one, uh, so is the uh, other two pixels. And then this particular pixel, whichever pixel it is, uh, belongs to cluster number two, then another one, the next one, cluster number one, and the other one is cluster number one as well, okay? Now, in order to see the result, what I want to do is to create a new array with the same shape as this k-means label. However, rather than having the labels of the clusters, I want to have the RGBA uh, values of the corresponding cluster put in here. In other words, what I want to do is to have an array that instead of one, it says uh, these four values. And instead of two, it says 0 0.890887 and all the other, uh, you know, three values, right? Uh, and that is very easy to do that. We just uh, can go ahead and do this. Say the segmented image is going to be k means dot cluster centers and then those are going to be replacing the cluster labels right and don't forget to put the right in here and let's just take a look at this. You see, um, each of these labels have been replaced by the corresponding value in this array, okay? So instead of one, now we have, Oh, sorry, instead of one, we have this value because this is the value zero, one, two, and three. All right, so we have 0 0.89, blah, blah, whatever that was. Uh, and uh, this one, which was two, it's going to be this value. So the third one from the last should have this value, 0 0.4469, and you see 0 0.4469 and so forth, right? So the values of that array, each of them is replaced by another array, which represents the RGB values of the color representing the cluster in which that particular pixel belongs to. Now, 
before we can view this image, we have to turn it back to the shape that it originally came from. So we can go ahead and just replace it and just say segmented image is equal to segmented image dot reshape. Okay, how do we want to reshape it? To the same shape that it was originally. Remember that the original shape or the original image was uh, stored in this data frame called image. Okay, and its shape was this. Okay, so we come here and say reshape this array uh, into a matrix that has the shape of the original uh, data frame. So once we've done it, we can go ahead and type in plt.imshow and put in the segmented image there. And it will uh, create the result for us. And you can see here that we have a dark green, a light green, a kind of reddish color here, and then a white color here. These are the four uh, clusters of colors that uh, we have created, and the this, is the, this is the result. Now, as you increase the number of clusters, uh, this is going to look more like the original, whereas if you reduce the number of clusters, it's going to uh, look more different. So, for example, if I change the number of clusters from f 4 to 2 and run this whole thing again, this is going to be the uh, result. You see that the red is combined with the green, whereas if I increase the number of clusters from two to eight and run this again, the result is going to be something like this. So we have one, two, three, maybe four shades of green, and then you have the black and red separated from the others. Now, uh, one thing that uh, you can look at here is to look at k-means.inertia to look at the uh, basically fit of your model here. And uh, you, if you want to look at the silhouette score, you have to import it uh, from metrics. So you can go ahead and type in uh, from sklearn.metrics import silhouette score and then for to calculate the silhouette score you need uh, two inputs your uh, original Uh, your, your basically reshaped uh, image, which was the, or, you know, the true answers, basically, and then the labels. And it will take some time, however it will calculate, let me see what I have here, metrics, met. So you see that this is running here. Uh, it takes quite a while. And the reason that it takes a, a while is because uh, this is a pretty large database, right? But once it has finished running, you'd see that in this particular case, if you have uh, four clusters, the uh, silhouette score would be about 53%. Uh, here, when I ran it again, how many clusters I have? I have uh, eight clusters, so it's probably going to be a different value. But with four clusters, the inertia value, I ran it previously, and it was 53%. So if you're running it with a different uh, K as the number of clusters, you'd probably get a different value.